So what do you think of a driver? Now, I'm talking about a truck driver that has a lot of experience. He has no accidents and no tickets, right? Mm-hmm. Now, he's a, he's a good driver as far as safety record goes, right? Okay. Class A, good driver, but he it's gets... Oh, he's a butt. Hey, well, here's what happens. This is a guy that called me, so I want your opinion on it. Okay. He... He called me and he told me that he was set up for a drug screen for, uh, to, you know, to gain employment from this trucking company Okay. in the Midwest. And he said they scheduled him for a drug screen and he showed up to the drug screen place, whether it be Concentra or... Uh, med stop or whatever it's called. A DOT regulated one that's acceptable. So he goes in, pisses in a cup, and turns out his piss is hot. So it's too it's too warm. It's hot temperature. Correct. It's too warm, and so the person, I guess, administering it, or the person there at the desk, told him, "You now have to retest." You have three hours. They ha- he had to wait three hours, but he could not leave the facility. This is what they told him now. And this is mm-hmm. and this is a regulation, by the way. This well, is yeah, tr- DOT makes it that way for a reason. Right. So his reply was, well, I've got to pick my kid up from school. Right? Mm-hmm. And the lady told him, if you go... You, we have to put you legally down for a refusal. It'll go in the clearinghouse, and you now pretty much have a drug failure. Mm-hmm. So he said, tell you, I'm out of here. And could have could have had his wife pick the kid up, by the way. It wasn't it wasn't a insane, oh, my gosh, if I don't get there, I've got this two-year-old kid that won't you know be able to be picked up. This is a guy that's usually on the road anyways. Mm-hmm. He's not the guy that normally picks up the kid. <laughs> So, but anyways, now they put him down for a refusal, which is, some people think that that's not as bad as failing one. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Right. So what are your thoughts on that, first off? Um, Well, first of all, it was hot. You know, it was too hot for body temperature. Do you know what the temperature is supposed to be? Tell me. Well, I, I mean... I would guess what's the average person's t- uh, temperature? An average person's temperature can run anywhere from 97 to 98.9 and be normal. Okay. So I read up on it. The, the what they call the allotted range that they'll allow a driver to pass at okay. is between 90 and 100. If it goes below 90, it's too cold. If it goes above a hundred, it's too hot. This okay. is what the this is what the DOT regulations are showing. Well, I can see that because you know when you have a fever, your fever generally is ninety nine, a hundred. If you're a person that's ill and you have a higher fever than a hundred, mm-hmm. you're not going out your house. You're not doing certain things. You're laying down, taking ibuprofen, and trying to get rid of whatever sickness you have because you know when you are. When you have a fever, most people, when they have a fever of 99, are like, man, I don't feel well. So they automatically know that. So they're not going to be out getting a, a drug test done. I agree. Plus, you know, if, if you have a high temperature, you're going to even tell the person that's trying to set you up for a drug screen, hey, I don't really feel good. I got a fever. Mm-hmm. I'm not going anywhere. Like you said, you know, most people aren't, you know, going to force themselves to go. Right. It's not something that you're going to end up doing. Even if you go and get called for a random, if you tell them that you're, you're ill... You know, your work already knows that, and we'll we'll reschedule that. Before I forget, um, to get the rest of your opinion on this, wouldn't you think that range of 90 to 100 is a little weird? Only because, like, I can understand the above 100 because our body temperatures, like you said, are around 98 degrees. Mm -hmm. Most most humans are at the 98.6 is the actual average. Mm -hmm. But... That's considered a normal temp. Right, but the 90 is what I'm looking at. It's like, okay, so they'll allow, isn't it, didn't they say like hypothermia sets in at 96 degrees in your body? I mean, if, I, you're, if they're allowing a 90, de- or 90 degree temperature to pass, that's a little weird, don't you think? Well, here's the, here's what 
first of all, I run, my temperature is normal at about 97. Yes, I know that. I'm, I'm a chilly person. So I generally have that at 97. When you have a person, like, or not a person, but a temperature less than that, like you said, hypothermia kicks in. But if you're going, say you just got your urinalysis done, right? Mm -hmm. And you set your cup down, the testing people might have not, you know, they might not be able to grab that right away and temp it. So they have to give that degrees below that just so that they have the chance to go wash their hands, get their gloves on and get to that. Anything leaving your body is going to cool quickly. So they probably have a certain amount of time limit to also grab it. And depending on the temperature outside, whether it's, you know, heating or, you know, no, air conditioning running, they would probably give that that little bit of leeway too. No, I'd actually, I didn't think of that. It makes sense. So, yeah, so that's, that's solves. I'm the smarter one of the two of us. Yeah. Well, I mean, you were definitely smarter on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, that does make sense. So you take a leak, maybe wash your hands, you're in the bathroom, you come out, like you said, maybe the air conditioner is running, the temperature is dropping mm -hmm. quite rapid. I mean, I will tell you though, when I, when I make water for putting yeast in it, you know, to make bread or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, the temperatures, it takes a while for that to come down. You know what I mean? Like at 104 degrees or whatever you're supposed to put it at, you know, for your yeast, it does seem to come down very slow. So, but I guess they're being generous at the 90 degrees. But like you said, you put that, you know, a little, maybe you only have a quarter cup. I guess, you know, it's not much fluid in the cup. Some some people, you got to fill it so much mm -hmm. till you put it on the bathroom sink, wash your hands, and then come out. I guess you're right. It's probably, they probably need that 90. Yeah, I, I would say that they need that, that a little bit of that leeway of, of some lower temp. Now, granted, you can't get too low. You know, but I could see why it would be a little bit lower. Right. And I think that the glass that you piss in actually has a little sticker on it, don't it, that actually does the temperature. It changes colors. I think that they do have them. Uh, honestly, I haven't had a year analysis like that done in, yeah. in so long. So anyway, so going back to the driver, right? My question to the driver is, why would, you know, here is a, and, and really I, the reason I brought this up is because you know, it's like we see different things in the industry every week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've talked about drug screen failures and drivers messing up. But this is something different to where you, you know, because drivers, first off, are not very patient. You get a driver that has to sit two, three hours for a load, he's bitching. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was one of them. You know, nobody wants to sit. You know, you got, you know, you, you pull in somewhere, it's eight o'clock in the morning, you get offloaded. And now you're thinking, well, if I don't get loaded soon, I'm on the clock here, guys. Well, that's the thing is you're 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 on the clock, and those miles is what you get paid. So sitting is cutting into your pay. Right. So going now, flip that over to you walk into a drug screen, and you're so used to being demanding, and all of a sudden somebody tells you, well, your piss is hot. You gotta wait three hours. We can't test you for three hours. You got to wait. Now you're a truck driver that's used to pushing to get freight in and out of the trailer. And you're like, well, no, screw that. I ain't waiting. You know what I mean? I'm out of here. So, I mean, I'm not saying the guy's guilty or innocent. I'm just saying I could see, I could see this. And this is why I wanted to mention it to drivers. Have some patience when you walk in there. If, if by chance you, you piss and your, your urine's hot and to be honest with you, most of the times when, it, when a driver has hot or yeah. cold piss. There's a reasoning for it. You're carrying something else with you than your own urine. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Normally, you know, the, when, when a driver is using, like, let's say, let's say a truck driver goes somewhere for a drug screen, they will have their wife or their kid piss in a cup. I've seen it a million times to try to pass the test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because of something in their system. And normally it's cold. Mm -hmm. normally it comes down and you could tape it to your stomach and we've seen guys tape condoms to their stomachs you know what i mean and show up with with um their wife's urine attached to them and it comes back cold because by the time like you said by the time you go into the bathroom pour it in the cup come out it wasn't normal temperature to begin with mm -hmm. okay even if it was 92 by the time you get it tested now guess what it's now going to be you know Chilly, maybe even in the 70s, who knows? So that's normally, it's cold. So this guy comes back with hot. So it either can mean he had a fever, 
and was dumb enough to come to the piss test. Or, you know, do they have like little, they have like a little heater, so you're smiling. Like, because something just popped in my head. Yeah. What is it? Uh, no? Okay. I mean, I could tell you. I just, I don't know if everybody wants to know my thoughts. <laughs> it's oh, just, you think he had it up his ass? Yeah. That's right. I mean, when you do temperatures on babies, you always have to take a degree off because that's a hotter area. That is true. So when you temp temperature under the arm, you add a degree. When you do up the butt, you got to take a degree. I knew, I had some acquaintances when I was a kid that flew to Jamaica and they literally bought hash and they had, I mean, a lot and they, they shoved it up their rump <laughs> to get out and, and somehow they caught them all, you know, before they boarded on the plane and they got arrested trying to smuggle hash. Actually, I think they got caught when they landed in the U S and they had to, I guess, being there and pooping and all that other good stuff until everything came out, they had to. They kept them there in the. Well, those X-ray machines show up the uh, foreign objects. Yeah. Even if it was in a condom, or it's still a, a prophylactic, you know, or however you pronounce it. It's 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 Perfect. plastic. It's rubber. It's so here's the not advice. normal in the body. Here's the advice, drivers. If you, if you have drugs in your system, and you're trying to figure out, well. How do I get my wife's urine up my butt or under my armpit to keep it warm enough and to keep it at the right temperature? The answer is you're probably you not going. You can't. You can't. <laughs> just, you, just if you do, you got very lucky. What do you think, Ruth? I'm very lucky. If you're able to get past that test using someone else's urine for whatever reason, you were given a new chance on life. Yeah, my my advice. Look, listen, I'll tell you what. Truthfully, now, if you got drugs in your system, first off, you're one of the guys that's making the rest of the trucking industry look like shit. I mean that for real. It's true. I'm just gonna tell you guys that. First off, I, I've told everybody this before. It's your CDL. When when you're a guy that didn't go to college, and most truckers didn't go to college. Yeah, there's some guys out there driving a truck that went to college, but most are not college graduates. So that CDL Ruth that means a lot. It, in fact, it should mean a lot. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a profession. It's it's your it's your livelihood. It's what you chose to do for the rest of your life. Right. So my number one answer, guys, is is respect your damn CDL. And you know, if you're if you're living in a state where and there's a lot of states now, Ruthann, that weed is legal, but it's not federally legal. That's the difference is if you have a class A license, you can't have even a smidgen of it in your blood system. You know, and if you get drug screened, you're screwed. doesn't matter how legal it is somewhere else. Correct. So the advice is obviously don't do it. The second advice would be don't do a drug screen if you know you have it in you. Yeah. I mean, for real. I mean, I've seen guys with like cocaine and meth, right? Mm -hmm. Which doesn't stay in your system but 72 hours. You know, I mean, I know weed, if you're a heavy user, stays in, in your system like 30 days. Sometimes more if, Some, you, if you're heavy. Right. So the my advice is, first advice is, you know, you're driving a tractor trailer, guys. You, you really don't need to be. And I understand if a guy smoked weed, Ruthann, last week, for real, he's not high. He's not, he is absolutely not, he's in control of himself. If it's been seven, eight days, a week, a day even, since he smoked weed, I get it. He's in a state where it's legal. I get that. The problem is the feds don't give a flying shit. If it comes up in your blood system, you now are under a drug failure. Most companies aren't going to hire you. And now you got to go through the SAP program, which stands for Substance Abuse Program. We've talked about this several times on the show. Mm -hmm. So it isn't worth smoking a joint and hoping that you can go 30 days without getting tested. And if you, sm and if you do a line of Coke... And you're dumb enough to come in in 72 hours and take a damn drug screen, then you deserve to be kicked out of the industry. I'm serious. I, I, it's to me, it's no different than drinking and driving, because you're getting, you're changing your your thought process in some form. Either you're getting a lot relaxed, or you're getting paranoid, or you're getting, you know, whatever good feeling you're getting from being high. No matter what the drug is, it's no different than drinking. So if you have something to say about something, someone that's drinking and driving, it will be no different than doing drugs and driving. 
Well, I mean, I agree with you if you just did them and then you get behind the wheel. But like I said earlier. Oh, if, yeah, with the person that, that smoked dope, you know, on vacation two weeks ago. And legally. Yeah, no, I understand right. that. And I, I wish there was something that could be changed for them for that. Because, you know, that I don't, I don't have a problem with someone doing something recreational on their own time. You know, if, if somebody invents a test that shows that somebody that has marijuana in their systems is not inebriated, that guy's going to make about a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's worth a billion dollars because there are so many people that would like to smoke weed, you know, and still be able to be a, a truck driver but they'd like to be able to do it a weed on their own time and then, you know, be sober while they're driving. Well, unfortunately, there is no test that shows, hey, you just smoked it a week ago versus, you know, an hour ago. Right. And that's the problem, guys. So you're really, you're, you're, you're taking a chance with your CDL. And that's all I'll really say about that. And here's the other thing. The subject was more about somebody that comes in and has maybe a false test. And they're willing to redo the test. You're better off staying there for the three hours, Ruthann, because maybe by by chance you pass it, okay? And I've seen guys pass it, but most likely, okay, if you fail it, it isn't the results of you failing it are going to be no different if you walk the hell away. So why not stay and at least take the chance and see if you pass, right? Right, and it's funny because. When we were talking just now and you had mentioned about how a new concept of doing it reminded me something that I just read about where the DOT now is a, a just approved oral fluid testing for oral, driving. Oral fluid testing. Yeah, what, spit. What Swabbing your mouth, spitting in, the, in something. Really? Yeah, it says the Department of Transportation on Tuesday published a final rule that will allow oral fluid as an authorized testing method for the presence of unlawful drugs. It will become effective on June 1st. In order for an employer to implement oral fluid testing under DOT's regulation, however, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services will need to certify at least two laboratories for oral fluid testings, which has not yet been done. In essence, the DOT has cleared a regulatory hurdle that allows for oral fluid testing, but those tests are not yet authorized by the, you know, the health, um, health department. That's that's weird. So it's almost like how they, you mean like how they swab you for DNA type of a swab test? Um, it says the procedures regulation to allow oral fluid testing in lieu of urine testing, giving employers a choice that will help combat employee cheating on urine tests and provide a less intrusive means of achieving the safety goals of the program. Hmm. Um, That's weird. The measure comes as the numbers of drivers flagged for drag, drug infractions continue to climb. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were seeing it. it, The clearinghouse is clearing people out. So, guys, um, you might want to think twice about it. You know, have a beer at home on your vacation time or your time off. You know, that alcohol goes out of your system. I think it's eight hours. You can't drive um, within an eight hour period uh, after drinking. So, It says here, the department said that generally narrower detection window offered by oral fluid testing could give Fleet a better chance of detecting recent drug use, such as for post-accident drug tests, adding while oral fluid testing may provide a better indicator of an employee's recent use of drug, it also detects frequent users, but we note that oral fluid windows of detection will likely be shorter than the urine. Employers working in conjunction with their their service agents should determine whether urine or oral collection is best for their program. You know, it, it almost sounds like when you're reading that, that they're saying the oral testing really will tell you that it was more recent, mm-hmm. which, which goes back to what we were saying earlier mm-hmm. about, you know, being able to detect a guy that maybe seven days ago. But w- it's interesting, though, um, if they if they do a drug screen urine i wonder if they'll be able to do something like that okay guy fails a urine test for weed and he says man it's been 21 days since i smoked weed Mm -hmm. right legally in my state Mm -hmm. and so then they go ahead and do a mouth swab and they could tell no this has his it wasn't recent it would almost set up it would almost set up a defense for a driver that's not intoxicated You, you know what i'm saying well, yeah, that's why it said, it. I mean, I agree with you because it said there it will be able to show frequent users where when you're doing, 
you know, if you're one that's doing some of the other drugs that come out your system really fast, you know, within like three days or less, you can't tell if you're a frequent user then. But if you're doing it constantly where you're inhaling, that's going to show with the oral. So maybe that was the concept of it behind it. Wow. That's interesting. So we will try to follow that. I like that article you found and we'll try to catch up with it. Maybe we'll call a couple carriers and see what their thoughts are on the oral testing. Okay. All right. All righty. Let's go ahead and take a break. Hey, drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D-R-I-V-E-W-Y-Z-E.com. And start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, Check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team, and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them TalkCDL sent you. Are you a trucking company that is needing to hire Class A CDL drivers? Then you've come to the right place. With over 25 years of recruiting truckers, diesel jockeys can have qualified drivers scheduled for your next orientation. They work with carriers that need solos, teams, and student drivers looking for local, regional, OTR, company, and lease purchase positions anywhere in the United States. Check them out today at www.dieseljockeys.com. That's www.dieseljockeys.com. There's a show that the kids used to watch all the time. I used to love it. It was a movie. It was called We're Back. It was about dinosaurs. I have no idea. I thought you were going to say something like SpongeBob. No, no. What was that one cartoon that the the monster used to carry his eyeballs in his hands? Oh. What was that? Was that like Monsters, Inc. or something? No, Monsters, Inc. is the movie. Those are ah, real monsters. (laughs) What was it called? Ah, real monsters. That was funny. Like, I never really watched it, but every time I'd be walking by the TV when the kids were little on a Saturday, if they were watching cartoons in the morning, they were, it was that, that goofy looking monster. He always had his hands up in the air and his eyeballs, his eyeballs were in his hands. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyways, you know, that's just stupid. Um, Moving on, moving on, Ruthann, from the monster thing. Um, you know, I wanted to mention yesterday. I got a phone call from John. Actually, Johnny Acid. I was gonna say you might want to uh, clarify yeah, who yeah, he is. Yeah, Johnny Acid. Anyways, he uh, somebody had rolled a truck over just down the street from us. He came back from the dead. Yeah, Johnny's been dead a couple times. But anyways, so. It was, it's the reason I, I mentioned in the rollover, it's an interesting rollover. So I'm like, okay, I, I took my time getting down there because I thought it was all over. Well, here, apparently guy was in a, in a, uh, a bulk tanker and I think it was like half full with cement or something. It was a tractor trailer and he came to a red light and Johnny's like, yeah, it looks like he tried to beat the red light. And so he come up to a red light. Whipped, made a, a fast left turn, and then rolled, boom, almost, literally almost rolled all the way around and back up on his wheels. That's how hard he rolled. Um, so after further talking to, I ended up talking to another driver that um, works for the same company. I called him. I'm like, hey, did you hear about this roller? He's like, oh, yeah, I went by it earlier. And um, he said, what's really weird is when you come up to the red light, there were skid marks or the truck skid. So, you know, the story at first was they assumed he tried to beat the red light, right? Mm -hmm. 
Now you're seeing skid marks, which more indicates, do you understand what that indicates? That someone had to, to break. Right. So. Hard. Which means you, it, he was not looking probably at the road. Looked up at the last second and realized he was at the light. Locked his brakes up and then realized he ain't going to be able to stop. So he tries to go through and, you know, make the turn. Mm-hmm. Instead, of course, he rolls. Sounds, again, now after talking to a couple of other drivers, sounds like the guy was looking at his phone and looked up at the last second. And I'm going to tell you something, that's so, such a danger to, you know, anybody that is still looking at their phone going down the road. And I see, I see it all the time with, you know, cars, car drivers all the time. Like we see it all the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously. And I'll tell you what I, who did I say? I want you to tell everybody who did I say is the most dangerous driver on the road these days? Uh, young girls, young girls from 16 to about 25. They are about the most, they're, they're angry. Uh, like I said, I was at a stop sign. Uh, 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 actually I was at a, a red light the other day and purposely I'm behind a car and the light turns green and they don't go, and they don't go. Now, at least a minute goes by, or at least it seemed like a minute. So all I do is when I was a little, doop, you know, not a, I didn't lay on the horn or anything. I just gave them a little toot. And apparently they were sitting there at the red light on their phone, texting, doing whatever the hell they do. And all of a sudden the window comes down and the middle finger comes flying out. F you to me. Right? I'm like, so I'm thinking, all right, there's a dude in the car and now I'm going to, you know, hopefully not get into this argument as I pull up beside. It's probably a, maybe an 18, 19 year old girl. I'm look, I look at her like, you gotta be kidding me. You're sitting there texting and I guess it startled her the horn beep. And instead of just putting her hand up going, oh, sorry, I got to go. You know what I mean? Like most people, like if I, if I pull up to a red light and I look at my phone for a second, because I've done it, I'm not going to say I have never done that. But if I just look to see who I heard, maybe a, like maybe you hear somebody buzzing, you know, you hear your phone, you hear a message, whatever the case is. If I hear that and I pull up to a red light or a stop sign, I'll look at it real quick to see, okay, who just messaged me? And if I'm, if the light turns and somebody behind me goes, boop, I go, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally, it's, it's you know, a little bit of humility. And, okay, sorry, buddy. No problem. I'm going. I mean, it's just, it, it alleviates anybody getting pissed off at you. Blah, blah, blah. Not not an 18-year-old girl. <laughs> F you. Dude, they kind of mind of their own sometimes. How dare you beep it? Well, you see in the news that young girl that killed those two people recently. I guess it happened last year. And well, yeah, she got there's... sentenced to 14 years. And they were shown, what were they showing on video? How she laughed and had like absolutely zero remorse for the two people she killed. Young girl. So I'm not picking on young girls. We've raised young girls. Yep. And we have one that was pretty much an angry driver and she was in a pretty bad accident herself. You know? So guys, if you have a young girl behind the wheel, moms and dads, have a talk with her. But anyways, this rollover, I'm pretty certain... He was texting and driving. I think he was definitely doing something. I mean, you can't just go because, I mean, I think I could be wrong, but there is a, it don't, it's not flat coming through that section. I think it comes where there's a, a, a slight like decline and then you have to come up like it comes down off the road and it, it's like a little dippy area where it's not flat. So it's not like he could, you know. You can hear, I guess what my point is coming is, you will be able to hear the engine changing from just a smidgen of it going back and forth. Right, exactly. And, and you know, the, again, I'm not here to preach to the choir, you know, but I will tell you guys, in the blink of an eye, um, in a blink of an eye, you are looking down at your phone, and I, it's a federal offense You know, it's a federal thing. You can, a tractor trailer driver may not have a handheld device in his hand at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've met drivers, Ruth Ann, that said, you know, it's funny. What we were just talking about, we, I, what I just said, I'll pick up my phone at a red light Mm -hmm. and I'll look Mm -hmm. and drivers have gotten pulled over and they got a cell phone ticket because they just wanted to 
real quick with their hands, pick it up and say something on it or look at something or just whatever the case is. They just had to touch their phone instead of using voice command. And right there, ironically, that's when the cop is sitting there. Mm-hmm. He He's always sitting there looking at you when you pick your phone up. Well, not only that, but <laughs> we, we know because um, Sergeant Morris told us straight out, some of the cops are using binoculars to, to watch truckers to see if they're obeying all the laws. I mean, yeah, it kind of sucks that they're going to those extremes, but they wouldn't do it if they didn't feel they need to because there's so many stupid accidents from drivers just not obeying. I mean, if they if the if accidents have increased because of electronic devices being in the tractor, then they're doing what they need to make the rest of the world safe. I mean, if drivers weren't picking up their phone, they wouldn't be getting those those tickets. You know what that is? You let the cat out of the bag. Now, I actually have a video of Sergeant Morris talking about, I mean, this is a DOT cop in Kentucky. Awesome guy. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's literally telling us, listen, we sit on bridges with binoculars. If you're driving down the interstate truckers, this is what he said. He, and he said, if you think you're safe from us knowing that you're on your f- cell phone, think again. Because when you come into Kentucky, at least, he said, many of us are on bridges and we're pulling you over it because we're sitting with, they're literally with telescopes and binoculars watching for this. Okay. That's bad stuff. So, <laughs> so I actually have to go this Friday. Where to? Oh yeah. You have for, to go for, for a your, hearing. your speeding ticket. I got a speeding ticket that I'm going to fight. Not... I, I, I know I was doing more than what I should have been doing. Tell them what the speed was. <laughs> I was doing like 40, 45. In a? In a 30. Right. So you're 15 over. Yeah, but she dropped it down to 39, which is perfectly fine. But the way they were doing it was just not cool. The cop was standing in the middle of the road, probably, gosh, almost 100. I seen him... A, you know, pretty far down. I'm like, why is, is he in the middle of the road? But evidently he, it says that he lasered me at like 70 feet, 70 or a hundred feet away. He lasered me. So he's standing in the middle of the road with this telescope, basically shooting me with it to get my speed, which I went then and downloaded our dash cam onto my desktop and I played it to see, cause you know, not that I trust everybody, but you know, and I it shows where I slowed down to what I was supposed to be, but then for whatever reason I stepped on it and caught back up on my speed. <laughs> so you slowed down, and then sped back up. To well, the here's illness. the thing, and it's really crazy because if you're looking at it, it's like you could see the cop down the road. So it's like it, I'm I'm gonna probably use as an example. I was slowing down for whatever reason. I seen someone in the middle of the road. I might have stepped on the gas to catch up to see what they were doing. <laughs> I don't know. But it's kind of ironic that you see me slowing down and then all of a sudden I go up, like I drop down to like 40 and I was supposed to be like in 30. So you see me going down, 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 down. And then all of a sudden I just start going back up and it's, I don't know why, but I'm wondering if it's because I seen someone look like a cop, of course, standing in the middle of the road and me being nosy, like, what's he doing down there? Like, let me go see. And I'm going to blame them. I went faster because they were standing in the middle of the road and I wanted to see what it was. So <laughs> so you're going to go fight a speeding ticket this week and your defense is to blame the cop? Nah, not really, but I'm going to try. No, I'm kidding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Got All you right. laughing. That, that's going to work. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Drivers, if you're looking for a local home everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. 
Triple Truck Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. Got a article that I want to bring up. It was I was kind of interest, interested in this because I was thinking to myself, man, this this could be a problem, even though it worked out for this trucker. Um, trucker helps police chase. And I've seen videos before where a trucker is going down the interstate and the cops are chasing somebody and he tries to block the bad guy in and, and it works out. Mm-hmm. Or the guy wrecks, Wh- whatever the case is. I would tell you guys that in order for you to try and block somebody while a cop is chasing them, let me read this. It says, the incident began shortly after midnight on Tuesday, May 2nd in West Modesto. As CSSO deputies noticed a car nearly causing a collision and uh, they began chase. A car driver refused to stop. And so onward it goes, right? As they continued down the road chasing these bad guys, um, a trucker noticed it, right? And what he did was he created like a block or a break or whatever. And even it says that the suspect's car, he stopped the car from getting by him and then brought him onto the shoulder. So it sounds like the trucker maybe slowly you know, block them over to the shoulder or whatever the case is. Here's the problem with that. That, I mean, that's great, but that could end bad for the trucker. Number one, number one, if you cause somebody to get killed because you did it, especially somebody innocent in that car, maybe, maybe there's a guy running from the police and his wife or kids in there, or maybe he kidnapped somebody, whatever the case is. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, because you got in the way on purpose, do you first off? Do you really think the cops are going to say, "Yep, we we were hoping he would assist us"? They're no, they're they're going to be like, "You should have never done that." Blah blah blah. Now you're going to be on trial if you're the cause or you're the guy getting sued, all because I'm not saying we shouldn't help police when we can, okay? But think about that for a second. The other thing is, your company is going to probably fire you and then put that on, put that down. I'm just trying to protect the driver. Is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and I might be tempted, you know what I mean, to try to block a bad guy in myself. But man, if he smashes into the side of your truck and it's on video that you cut him off on purpose to block him for the cops, I promise you, you're still going to be faulted for an accident. You're going to be in trouble. You will be in trouble, especially if somebody gets hurt. Right. What are your thoughts? I, I actually agree with that. I mean, it's nice to try and help out, but usually the police say stay out of their, you know, stay away. They don't want to see someone get hurt unintentionally. Just the same way as if the co- if, if that driver would have been trying to block them, you don't know if what circumstances the, the car driver was in. If he hit the truck the wrong way, he could have made the, the, the whole back end jackknife or hit it hard enough to where it shifted his, his freight, anything. And then what are you going to tell your company? Well, I was trying to help the cops out by stopping. They're not going to care. They just lost a ton of merchandise. Or if, if it would have hit hard enough in the wrong spot, you know, you don't, you don't know. And I know police don't want you involved, period. They'd rather you not help them when it comes to certain things. Do you know how many times in a day in the United States of America where somebody gets a, an emergency at their house and they throw their kid in a car or their wife or somebody and they try to speed to get to the hospital where it's an emergency. And so, and all of a sudden a cop sees it and he, he tries to pull the person over because even though you're trying to get to a hospital, a cop's 
trying to say, no, that's dangerous the way you're doing it. I'm going right. to pull you over. All I'm saying is you might be trying to block somebody that's trying to get to the hospital. Right. You know what I mean? You just don't. Pregnant lady giving birth. I, I'm telling you, I've heard stories, and I bet you truck drivers can, t- can testify to this. I've heard stories where somebody was on their way to the hospital. They called mm-hmm. the police station and said, hey, I'm doing 90 miles an hour. I'm on the interstate. I am not stopping. I got somebody that needs to be at that hospital. Clear the way. And they did. Yeah. They, they, I mean, so, I mean, it is nice if you're having an emergency, but there's many people that have an emergency and they just don't want to wait for an ambulance and they're on their way to a hospital. You might think you're being, um, you know, Joey helpful with the law and you're going to get a big gold star and make a viral video when indeed you're, you're blocking off somebody that is in need of assistance and they're just trying to get to the hospital. I would just tell everybody, stay out of the way. I mean, I'm just telling you, it, 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 just stay out of the way. If a lot, a lot could go wrong in your favor <laughs> by you trying to use that 70 feet of truck to block somebody. No, I agree. I, I, uh, if for some reason the cops did you need your help and you had a CB, they'll, they'll flip channels and they'll, they'll try and contact you. Or something to that effect. Somebody out there is probably saying right now, Oh, oh boy, well, that way you're free try to help the cops. I ain't going to... Uh, uh, if I see it, I'm going to help them. I'm going to block the guy in. You're a fool. You're foolish. Because the odds of something bad happening are more in your favor than good. I'm just saying. Hey, you could even get a ticket. <laughs> Cop could be pissed off at you. I'm just saying there's a lot that could go wrong. And I'm... I'm not. If I'm driving my tractor trailer and there's a bad guy coming down the interstate and I see lights, I don't know the situation. I am not throwing my truck in front of somebody that's speeding. I'm just not going to do it because wrong could happen. That's all I want to say about that. That's just my opinion. What's your thoughts? I agree with most of that, yeah. (laughs) Well, you might not agree with some of it, but... No, I'm just saying I agree with most of it. Um, I would probably be the same way. I wouldn't want to get involved in in that manner only because... I wouldn't want um, repercussions not going the way I was planned because, you know, I know for a fact there's a lot of things I might plan and this is how I'm going to have it. It's going to happen for me and I don't always do that. So if I'm going to say, I'm going to plan on, 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 on blocking this, this driver for these cops, I'm going to be so good and it totally screw up because nothing goes as I plan half the time. So I'm not going to go and be involved in that. You know, be one thing if you're you're like on the street, like walking down the road and you see someone grab a person, and they're running and the cops ch- give and chase. You know, I might stick my foot out and trip the person. I agree with that. Too. <laughs> so, no, I agree with that. That might I it, might do something like that, but I ain't going to use my vehicle as a source. Well, exactly. And that's a great example. You know, cops chasing somebody, you know, and you, there's a guy running towards you with a purse and you tackle him or you trip him, like you said. You know, maybe the guy gets cut up and sues you that way. Who the hell knows? But the bottom line with it is, I, I could see taking a chance with that. I seen a video the other day where um, a cop was getting his ass kicked on the side of a road. He had pulled some guy over, and he tried to handcuff the guy because of whatever happened. And the guy was actually um, trying to grab the cop's gun. They were wrestling, and two citizens came by and, and tackled the guy, and they held the guy down and the cop, and the cop was able to handcuff him. The cop said, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I, I would be all for that. I mm-hmm. would definitely help a cop, uh, somebody getting beat up, whatever the case is. I could see being helpful and, and, and intervening that way. But like you said, it's, it's the vehicle thing and my job and what I could cause by swerving into somebody on purpose, now I become the bad guy and I get sued or I get arrested or, or I get fired, whatever the case is. I just don't think it's worth it trying to stop the guy fleeing because you don't know if he's really fleeing, you know what I mean, from mm-hmm. the cop. He may be on his way to a hospital. I don't think it's worth that. Stop that guy with the purse. He's running down the street. That's worth it, okay? You could see the cop chasing him a little bit differently. <laughs> exactly, you know. So that's all I wanted to mention, guys. You know, sometimes we... we I'll tell you something else truckers do. This is the other thing. Mm. I'm going to mention this. Mm. You get a, you get a, you're in a traffic jam, and all of a sudden you got one or two cars coming up along the side of the shoulder. Splitting the lanes. Well, not splitting the lanes. That's motorcycle. I'm talking about the, on the shoulder. Just, you know, driving along the shoulder to get to the... 
you know, uh, an off ramp that's a mile down the road. So he's now driving in the grass and you'll see truckers go all the way over to block them in so they can't come because they're, they're taking it upon themselves to say, no, you're going to follow the rules just like I am. You are not the law, brother. And I'm going to tell you something. I've seen videos where a trucker did that and a guy actually ran into the back of his truck and the trucker got arrested mm -hmm. for doing what he did. Yep. And so, guys, I'm just telling you, you're better off. You're really better off obeying the law on that road. And if somebody's sneaking up alongside you, let them go. If a cop sees them, they, they will ticket those guys. I've seen that, too. Mm -hmm. So that's all I want to say. And that's pretty much the podcast for the day, Ruthanne. Do you have the word of the day? I do. What's, what is it called? Should I turn it up for you? Let me do that. Let me jack it. You ready? Go for it. Glumming. Did you say glumming? Glumming. Glumming? Like, glumming. Oh, glumming. Like roaming, but with GL. Glumming. I, I thought you said glumming, like slumming. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So what? what glumming? G L O? G L O A M I N G. Like roaming, but with G L. So gloaming, and what does gloaming mean, Ruthann? It's twilight, as in early morning, dawn, or especially early evening, dusk. Soliness or melancholy. One Melico more time. Mel melancholy. Me me really interesting. I can't pronounce it right now. That's melancholy? Yes, Melanch thank you. Yeah. Melancholy. Melancholy. Um, you know, I wanted to mention something, and that was a neat word, by the way. Um, a driver wrote in. And he asked us to start having, like, trucker trivia. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to lay that on you, maybe, you know, uh, with your word of the day. Yeah, he asked me, I said, I said, well, give me something, and I'll, I said, give me some trivia, and I'll, I'll mention it on the next podcast for you. And so he writes, okay, what is the legal height for the mud flap in the state of Texas? And so... This was yesterday, and I wrote back to him. I said, okay, what's the answer? Because I didn't want to look it up, right? Mm -hmm. He never answered me. I was like, <laughs> so, I mean, we were going to have the trivia, and uh, maybe maybe next week we'll have some trucker trivia in the show from now. That's actually a good idea. I like that, some trucker trivia. And then maybe what we could do is we could even say, okay, the first person or the first Five people that get the answer right will get a hat or something like that. We could do that. Get, do some giveaways. Well, it'll be hard to do it while you're while we do it this way, though. That's the only thing, what, don't you think? What do you mean? What the podcast mean? Well, no, I'm just saying, like when you hear the podcast, the first say five people that message us on a, a certain messenger, that would be the instructions. The only way to do it: send us a message. Um, for example, on whatever, TikTok or Facebook or whatever, right? And if they are the first ones, because it's all, it's all time stamped, you know, we could say, okay, here's, here's who won the hat. Thank you for the trucker trivia answer. You know, I like that. I like that idea. We'll have to play with the idea and try to get something going. I'm, I'm going to put it in your hands. Is it in your hands? Are you taking it? You're going to run with the ball? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 All right, we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.